To identify very good items, we need to first understand what makes an item good, either for our class or for other classes. Let's take a look at the mercenary for starters. Here you can see that in the mercenary starting area on the passive tree, we do have very easy access to armor and evasion. This makes it so that generally speaking, the mercenary is always going to stack armor and evasion. Obviously, this is um, depending on which build you are really going for, but generally speaking, that's how you identify the main source of defense when it comes to the mercenary. Let's take the Sorg, for example. We are starting right here as the Sorg, and it's very easy to spot that the Sorg, for example, has extremely easy access to maximum energy shield increases, which then also means that the primary defensive uh, mechanic of the sorcery uh, of the sorceress can be the energy shield. Of course, there is going to be stuff like hybrids or stuff that completely break every rule in the entire game because that's just how Path of Exile works. But as a rule of thumb, this is how you go about identifying good bases for your build. If you have done step one, then you can check out the Path of Exile Planner from Maxroll, which is going to be linked down in the description below. And you can check the uh, class right here. I've just chosen the Witch Hunter. And then when you click on the empty chest slot right here, we get access to literally every base in the game for the body armors. As we already said, armor and evasion is extremely important for our mercenary. Doesn't matter if it's a gemling or a witch hunter. So we filter by armor and evasion. And here you can now see literally every item base that exists in the game that has armor and evasion. You can see the normal ones, you can see the advanced ones, and you can see the expert ones. This only means that the normal ones have a little bit less of a base armor evasion rating compared to the advanced, and the advanced have a little bit less than the expert. So ideally, you always want to find the expert ones and equip those, but those only become available later. But how do you actually choose the correct base for your character. In this case, it is not so hard because you will either focus on an impl implicit that is extremely important to fix your character's problem. For example, like the cloaked males right here that actually bring fire, cold and lightning resistance with them. Or if you just care about the highest armor and evasion rating for a character, you would go and choose the expert scale mail. This also means that basically every other of every other base type is going to be of less value to not only you, but also to other players. Because why should in the end game a player spend their hard earned currency for an advanced scale mail with 195, 178 stats if they could also just go and get an expert scale mail with 294 and 268 armor and evasion rating respectively. This obviously makes an expert scale mail much more interesting for you to pick up while you are mapping. And this obviously goes throughout the whole game, not only for the hybrid bases, but also if you are a Sorg, for example, you are looking at the energy shield bases. And it's the exact same concept. Why should a player take an advanced altar rope if they could get an ex expert altar rope that also has a very strong implicit on top? Therefore, if you want to become better at picking up and identifying good items faster during mapping, it's very important to look through all of the bases that you can find on the Max Roll Planner so that you can memorize the best bases dropping. Currently, we don't really have an easy access of configuring our own item filter, which is going to be handled by Neversync. So all power to him that he is going to um, finish his filter blade.xyz so that we can actually do this inside of the filter, automating the process. Until then, you kind of have to at least a little bit memorize the highest energy shield, the highest evasion, the highest armor, and also the highest hybrid values if you want to not have to go back to town every time that you are mapping. 
Same actually applies to the weapons as well. For if we if we go back to the mercenary example, we know that we need crossbows for our gas grenade build, for example, and it's the exact same spiel again. Why would I buy an advanced bombard crossbow with the correct implicit if I could get an expert bombard crossbow that does around 10 to 15 percent more DPS just on a baseline? This is very important to know and it is going to tremendously decrease the time of you having to look and identify an item if it's actually good. If you can memorize a couple of very good bases, this is automatically going to translate in a much higher mapping speed because you're not picking up items that are not important. Now let's actually have a look at the game. I have just ran a map and I have just stockpiled items that I found on the ground. I haven't even um, looked at them yet. I have just identified them with Doriani so that you and me can take a look at the items here together and identify together if those are good or not. Since we have just now spoken about the Bombard crossbow, we know that we are very much so looking for an expert or advanced Bombard crossbow, depending on where you are in your current player progression or character progression. Here, I therefore picked up an advanced Bombard crossbow just to show it to you guys that I have been able to identify a Bombard crossbow on the ground therefore took it with me and now since I know that this one is a very highly sought after base I can actually start investing currency to see if I get lucky on the Bombard crossbow base. Now it has done attack speed which since I am knowing the build is actually pretty nice to have so I can basically unlock the next step which would be augmenting it. Now we have rolled accuracy rating which means that the prefix is full and since I want really high physical damage on my crossbow and the prefixes that provide the high physical damage are now already occupied by the accuracy rating, I am not going to continue crafting on this crossbow. So I can go ahead and sell it right here. Next up, we have an expert scale mail, which is completely white. It has no mods on it. But if you remember back to the start of the video, we have said that the scale mail is actually the highest armor and evasion rating base in the game, therefore making it very nice to pick up and at least try a transmute and maybe even an augmentation orb on to see how it's going to roll. Since we know that the scale mail has the highest armor and evasion rating, we still want to increase that number with stuff like percent increased armor and evasion, maybe flat armor and evasion. And since it's a chest, we also always want to have max life on there in terms of the scale mail. And we also want to ideally hit resistances. So now that we have this plan in our head, we can now start First and foremost, we picked up the scale mail because we knew how good the base is. So we can now transmute this and see that we didn't get super lucky on the first suffix. Actually, T6 life regeneration isn't even that bad because we can still have two more suffixes, which means that we have two more chances to get resistances on there. Let's take a look at how the prefix is turning out. And that one is actually awful. No one needs this. You could now decide that you want to gamble a little bit on it, which I'm going to do here for um, the video's sake. And now you can see we actually got lucky and we have gotten another suffix on the item, basically enabling us to keep going with the craft on the expert scale mail. Now, I personally wouldn't now continue with slamming exalt orbs on here, but for the video's sake, let's just do it. Let's say the physical thorns damage was life, or armor and evasion, then this would be a very easy target to increase the value by using your exalt orbs. So right now, when I'm looking at the item, I still, for the suffixes, need another resistance. I basically always want to have resistances on the helmet, on the chest, on the gloves, and on the boots. And for the prefixes, I really want to further increase the armor and evasion. And I'm also looking for a life roll on the prefix. So now we've slammed this on here. We got dexterity, which basically renders the item useless. So 
we only got one resist on the suffix, which means it is actually not going to be either usable for me because I have a better chest with more resistances on the suffixes. And looking at the prefixes, that is the only thing that I can actually slam something on. We also don't have a high chance of getting the armor and evasion rating very high because we already have a bad prefix on the item. So this is also now a sell when we go to Doriani and sell it. Then we have an item that I picked up and already identified because I wanted to show you how to also identify stuff after you have picked them up. We know that the advanced Vagabond armor is also a pretty good base. Not the very best base like the scale mail that we were talking about before, but nonetheless a good item that might actually sell. So from the stuff that we just now learned from the scale mail is that you want to increase armor and evasion. If we are looking at the prefixes right here, you can actually see that we have rolled T2 increased armor and evasion max life and we rolled T4 increased armor and evasion, which is great. This is exactly what we want to have to inc further increase the armor and evasion rating of the item. The only problem with the item here again is that we only have one resistance. The good thing though is we also have strength which directly also transfers into maximum life. Those 27 strength are, and you can look this up right here in your characters menu, are actually translating into 54 maximum life and also so help you solve strength requirements, for example. So actually not uh, the worst stat for the suffixes, whereas reduced ignite duration is something that we ideally wouldn't have wanted on the item. So for the video's sake, I'm going to go and slam this item as well, because we are looking for a very high increased armor and evasion base edition or we want to find additional max life on the prefix. So what are we going to get when we slam this on here? We actually got the flat armor and evasion rating T8. Now, looking at the item, you can spot that the maximum life that it provides is not necessarily super high, even if we factor in the 54 life coming from the strength. But this is definitely a very good um, early to mid game item that can probably easily sell for like two, three, maybe even five exalts, depending on how desperate a person is for lightning resistance, high armor and high evasion, for example. So now that we look at this, we have um, accomplished the goal of increasing the armor and evasion rating quite a lot through our crafts because we got, for example, the T8 uh, flat rolls for armor and evasion right here. That was very lucky and very good. The T4 increased armor and evasion is also pretty high. The, unfortunately, the T2 up here at the very top wasn't super high and I would have also preferred a only max life roll on here. That would have turned the item actually extremely good. Also on the suffixes, I would have loved to get rid of the reduced ignite duration for another resistance, which would have instantly bumped up the price of the item by quite a lot. So I'm just going to throw it in here for 3x. Maybe someone uh, buys that. If after two, three, four, five hours or the next day, no one has bought this, I'm either going to sell the whole tab uh, to the vendor or I'm just going to throw them into the 1x stash. Maybe some um, someone is going to buy it and that's totally fine for me. Then next up, the Superior Expert Bolstered Mitts. I know that the Expert Bolstered Mitts are extremely good when it comes to the armor themselves. And you can check this again on the Max Roll Planner. And as the more often you do this, you can actually memorize the good bases. And I know for a fact that Expert Bolstered Mitts is the second highest armor item on the glove slot. The only a thing that is a little bit higher is the Molded Mitts. So I definitely pick those up because not only do they have quality due to the superior tech, but they're also expert bolster smith. So uh, for the video's sake, I'm again going to transmit this and our aim is to increase the value of the, the armor value of the gloves right here. So we are again looking for uh, increased armor, increased life, because we want to have increased life basically everywhere. This obviously differs from build to build. And then we are looking for 
uh, resistances on the suffixes. So now when we do this, we have 36% increased armor, which is definitely good. But unfortunately, the tier is not as high as we would like to. Still, I'm going to continue this. We have gain life per enemy killed, which is a suffix that we don't really need because again, we really want to have resistances on the suffixes. So right here, I would actually say no, thank you. And I wouldn't continue the project here on the gloves. So this is basically my thought process going through the loot when after I picked them up. Now I picked up this uh, advanced voodoo focus and I can actually very quickly identify if this item is going to be good. Since it's a focus, we are more so looking at spell stuff. Spell stuff due to the top side starting area will usually also want to have high energy shield. And depending on the build, they also maybe want to mana stack. If we are looking at the item right here, we do actually see that the prefixes like maximum mana, increased lightning damage and increased energy shield are actually playing in exactly into the fantasy of someone that would use a focus. Unfortunately, though, the suffixes are not really that great. The critical hit chance for spells is actually fine, but the reduced attribute requirements are not as good. So if I'm looking at this item, I probably would say something like three, five exalts in the current system, in the current market. But there's actually a trick. There is something that is going to be linked down in the description for you, which is called Sidekick. And it's automatically going to solve the problem of having to price an item like this correctly. Here, when you press Control D over the item, the uh, little menu is appearing. Here you can now tick the boxes that you want the sidekick to check for you on the trading website. So as I said before, it's a focus. We are basically interested in energy shield, uh, increased something damage, and maybe the critical hit chance for spells. Now, when we click search, we can actually see that someone right here has a pretty similar item to ours with the ticked boxes and they are selling it for four exiles. Now, when trying to price this item, you're now further comparing the stats that you have. For example, the, this person's maximum mana is way higher than ours, therefore making that item much more expensive, much more usable. Then we also have, then on our item right here on the left side, we also don't have a resistance further decreasing the value. But the good thing is we still have an open suffix. So maybe someone would like to slam um, a suffix in here and basically try their luck. So I would just go here and usually I wouldn't even price the item at all. But for the video's sakes, I would just go here, price the item for one exalt, put it in here and then Maybe someone is going to find it. Then last but not least, jewelry. Extremely important to basically always pick up. If you find an amethyst ring, white, blue, rare, always pick those up because chaos resistance is extremely hard to come by and therefore extremely valuable. So now I have a stout unset ring, which is not necessarily the best base, but I had to pick up a ring for you to show this to you. Now, it actually rolled with maximum life um, from the get-go, which means that is basically worth trying my luck right here, at least with a with an orc orb, should actually be worth the thing. Now you can actually see we rolled plus five to all elemental resistances. And if we go back to our initial topic, we want to fill suffixes with resistances. So looking at this ring, it actually makes it super good in terms of the prefixes and suffixes. Sure, it could have been a better base by being an amethyst ring, by being a ring with an implicit that grants resistances, but nonetheless, this one is actually worth a regal orb to continue the craft. Now, with the gain three mana per enemy killed as a T1, I'm not really happy. And now it's for you to decide if you want to maybe sell the item. Again, control D, check out how the... Uh, what the market says for a plus 65 max life, plus five to all elemental resistance ring. And then you could decide, do I maybe want to sell it for one exalt? You could just go and uh, do that right here and therefore um, sell it in your stash tab. Or if you say, you know what, I'm feeling a little bit lucky today, you could keep slamming the item. 
But for this item, I would actually advise heavily against it because, well, while the prefix is really good with T5 maximum life for, I don't know, people that are just now starting out maps or are basically level 70, 75 or so, this max life value will probably already be quite good. The problem here though, even though we rolled plus five to all elemental resistances is that we have already two suffixes and both of them are actually T1 rolls, which obviously drastically decreases the value of the item. So I would just go here, maybe I, I wouldn't price it, I would just sell it, but for the video's sake, we just put it here in the 1x and we're basically done with the inventory. Now, if I'm going to open up a new map for you guys to spot right here, let's just take this one and traverse into the next map. During mapping, all of this comes together so we can actually go through the map and apply all of the stuff that we have learned right now. So if I'm going to encounter a pack of enemies right here with all of the learnings that we have from coming from the video, especially when I'm encountering a rare, I am basically being greeted by a lot of items at the same time. This is a lot of currency, which makes it so that I really, uh, that you don't really have to think as much. So obviously you pick up the currency and we have an advanced altar rope, which again is not expert. So if you don't have um, an advanced altar rope and that would actually be an upgrade for you, you obviously pick this up. But for me, um, I don't, firstly, I don't need an altar rope. And secondly, I also don't uh, want to sell this because it's not an expert base. So now I just keep going. I know advanced wizard helm is actually okay, but the shielded helm is actually the better base that is gonna ring uh, that is going to uh, roll higher. So not only is it not expert, but it's also not the highest armor evasion base, which makes it so that I'm not going to pick it up. Same applies right here to the advanced martyr crow. Basically going to ignore it. Obviously. I am not standing um, that long and mouse overing over every uh, item to make that distinct uh, to, to be able to make that distinction. But for the video's sake, I'm trying to explain literally all of the thoughts that go into deciding do I want to pick this up or not. Now let's actually kill this next pack as well, so we are uh, so we can do this in silence. And here we actually have very interesting stuff. We do have the expert gothic staff. And we do have the expert crackling stuff. Here you can see that there is a lot of lightning damage on this one. It's an expert staff, so I'm going to pick it up. And we have the expert gothic quarter staff, which I'm also um, going to pick up because I know that that's a really, really highly sought after base. So maybe when we go and identify the items after the map, we are going to get lucky and we can get some high fist rolls on there, for example, and then maybe actually buy and um, then actually maybe sell the item here you can see there's an advanced altar rope but i absolutely do not care about it because for my progression where i'm at i only really want to look at the expert basis in the first place in case there is an for example advanced crossbow i could maybe think about picking that up but generally speaking for my point of progression i don't really care about the ex uh, about the advanced basis anymore Obviously, if you are a little bit earlier in the progression, you would pick those up. I'm looking at the items here, chiming stuff, advanced. If I see that, I don't really care. Again, obviously, all of the... Uh, all of the... Uh, again, obviously, all of the currency items I'm going to pick up. We do have expert gauss wraps, which is actually an evasion energy shield base. We have expert silk slippers, which I'm going to pick up. And then I'm going to go get the gold. We have advanced intricate gloves that I could use to, for example, salvage because they have a socket. Or if I would need a um, regal shard, I could take that out or identify those and sell them for some gold. So I'm going to do exactly that. And so that I can remember that I'm just going to sell those regardless so that I don't need to double check this. I'm going to put them here to the right side which is something that I usually do when I have a very good item or I have an item that is basically uh, completely irrelevant. I'm putting that to the right side and it's very easy for me to distinguish between a very good item and an almost, uh, and, and an almost useless item when I just want to sell it for gold. And that's basically how I go through the map, I'm basically just killing the monsters. Every time they pop out some stuff, like an expert varnish crossbow, I know expert, that's good, 
Varnish Crossbow is okay, so we could try our luck right here. Let's say the map is now finished and we have uh, completed the uh, all, completely killed all of the rares inside of the map. Then I would actually zone out and then control click on Doriani so that all of the items get instantly identified. Now I can start looking at the items again. Now we remember the crackling quarterstaff that we had. We do want to have additional lightning damage on here. We definitely don't want to have accuracy rating. The mana per enemy killed is okay. Just for science, we could throw a regal orb on, on here to keep basically judging the item. Actually, not that bad because T9 Fizz is definitely something that you can keep slamming exiled orbs in. Or again, you press Ctrl D, uh, tick the affixes that you want to compare. So for example, physical damage right here, because that's really only the only one that we care about. And then we can see that um, we could sell this base for one exile. Then again, uh, right here, the uh, Gothic staff that we picked up, we really wanted to have high physical damage since we already have a pretty low prefix that is fire damage and a pretty low suffix that is uh, leech as life. We don't really care about the item at all. So we can actually sell the item. We can also sell the item that we put to the right side so we don't have to think about it anymore. Then when looking at boots next, I ideally want to see crazy stats on the prefix or the suffix to even be able to consider exalting those or, or regaling first and then exalting or they would have to have movement speed in this case we actually have very nice maximum life and we also have fire resistance which basically qualifies the item for me to regal that now we're looking for more resistances and we are looking for movement speed on the prefix. Right here, it's actually a little bit tricky on the boots spot, uh, on the boots uh, specifically because boots basically always need to have movement speed as a prefix. If they don't have that, they are completely useless. So it's up to you now. Do you feel a little bit lucky and you think you can in two more prefix attempts, for example, slam the necessary movement speed on there? Or again, you do control D and tick the max life and the double resistances and actually take a look at other people's items. Here you can see that there is an item that does not have movement speed, just like ours, and they're selling it for one exile. So right now for you, it's up to decide, do you want to gamble a little bit, maybe slam movement speed on there or resistances, or just get rid of it for one exalt to give another person the chance to slam the stuff. Um, I personally don't care. Let's do it for science right here. We got a stun threshold on the prefix together with the increased energy shield, which is not that bad, but makes it definitely less appealing because the chances of actually getting movement speed on here are way way smaller obviously the suffixes could be could turn out kind of good let's actually keep going we got maximum energy shield right here which is not really a bad stat per se but they blocked the prefix and we now can't roll and now we can't exalt slam movement speed here anymore which basically completely breaks the item we can take a look at what the um sidekick says when we take all the stuff that is pretty good we can actually see that we have been a little bit too strict. So if we now get rid of the 42 maximum energy shield right here, we can see that it's still one exalt. So I would just go here, put it in the one exalt tab and then go next. Here we can see lightning resistance on the gloves that we picked up, T3 suffix. That's not even that bad. Definitely use one of the augments on here to see what it's going to roll. Again, if you remember, uh, we have some mana stacking going on. So this could actually be good for those. But the problem there is that they probably don't need an evasion rating or energy shield base. So this one is kind of a gamble. I actually wouldn't consider um, continuing the craft. And then on the expert varnish crossbow, we will actually try our luck, see how it goes. When we have reduced attribute requirements, it's basically already dead. Um, after we slammed T1 fire damage on there, this one is completely dead. So this also goes to Doriani and I also sell the other stuff because for the video's sake, uh, I only pick those up and I don't really care about those. But this is basically how you go and move through the map and then through your inventory. Again, it's really important to have a look at the planner to check out all the bases right here that are available 
to learn at least a little bit which of the bases are good and usable and also which of those are not really important. For the amulet, um, I basically pick up every amulet in the entire game because it's really important to have a um, good amulet and most of the people don't really care about the implicit that much, especially earlier on um, when they can have a very good uh, amulet. They can roll plus to all level of projectile skills, for example, tremendously increasing the value of the amulet. Same applies to rings. I basically also pick up every ring because they can turn out very good, especially amethyst rings or stuff like the um, prismatic rings are highly sought after because they can easily solve the elemental resistance problems for you. If you have further questions, I am live right now on Twitch. The link is going to be down in the description and also in the pinned comment below. And if you don't want to miss out on content similar to this, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll see you.